Well, good morning, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you from gorgeous San Antonio, Texas, the second most powerful, passionate, and purposeful coach and speaker in the world. Happy Friday to you. I know you are excited that it is Friday. Friday is an interesting day in people's minds. You know it's no different from any other day, quite frankly. We're spinning around this big, bright thing called the sun, and yet people have expectations around that. And so today I'd like to have a serious conversation. I'm gonna tone down my intensity a little bit and bring something to the awareness of your mind that you may have never considered before. Again, there are two types of listeners in the audience uh, that I speak with. Listener number one is a person who does not have a faith life, which I love having you on part of the show. And, and I don't like to say you don't have a faith life uh, because you have a tremendous faith life uh, in, in one aspect. You have faith that a really long time ago there was a giant explosion that made a bunch of little crumbs of stuff floating out in everywhereness that just happened to land just far enough away from this burning object not to freeze, just close enough not to burn, and then all of a sudden there was water that was forming, and then goo that was forming, and then fishes that were swimming, and then crawling on the land, and then climbing in trees, and <laughs> eating bananas, and then becoming us. So you're not a person who does not have faith, you have like faith in that, right? And then there are people who have a faith life, uh, a faith in, belief in something bigger than themselves, a faith in God. So with the passing of Reverend Billy Graham, I have discovered that even among the people of faith, that there is a comparison problem. And we all understand that comparison is the thief of joy. When people begin to look at other people and make conclusions about their life in relation to others' lives, uh, it's a challenge. At a conference I was at recently, uh, the gentleman said this, if you ever walk into a room and find yourself feeling superior to other people, well, be careful with that because one day you will walk in a room and feel inferior to people. So being able to see people as equals, if you will, celebrating each person's individual strengths and weaknesses is a very liberating thing. Because the problem with Facebook, the biggest problem with Facebook in comparison and people in general who are not authentic about what they're truly experiencing or the struggles that they're truly experiencing is this. Here's the problem. You tend to compare your behind the scenes to other people's highlight reel. Now, you know what a highlight reel is, correct? You know, when the movie comes out, it's the best scenes of that movie that entice you to want to come see the movie. That's, that's the trailer or the highlight reel, okay? We tend to compare our behind the scenes to other people's highlight reels and we always come up wanting. So comparison is the thief of joy and it even happens in the church among the people of faith. So those of you who have read your B-I-B-L-E understand that there are rewards for those warriors of the faith who do what God has called them to do. And yet, there's a powerful element missing that nobody's talking about that I wanna share with you this morning in the hopes of giving you incredible encouragement today wherever you are on your journey of faith. And so, I'm gonna adapt a story to San Antonio style, okay? So there was this dude wanting to build a giant deck in the back of his house here in San Antonio. So he went down there on Commerce Street, you know where all the skilled laborers hang out and are waiting there for people in pickup trucks to come and, and maybe have work for them for the day. They're just, you know, laborers who are ready to do whatever work is necessary. So uh, at six in the morning, the dude pulls up in his giant truck and he says, who here knows how to swing a hammer and nails? And they all raise their hand and he says, okay, I need five of you to come with me. Uh, will you take a hundred bucks for the day? And they're like, yeah, I'll take a hundred bucks for the day. So they jump in his truck and he takes him to the house. Well, it becomes apparent at about lunchtime that he's probably not gonna finish the job. So he goes back out and he reaches out to another group of guys. Hey, guys, I know it's lunchtime. I'm gonna be working till six tonight. Does anybody know how to swing a hammer? I need five more guys. Five more guys jump in. They come back to the house and it becomes apparent they're not gonna complete the job. So he goes back out at three o'clock to the same place and he goes, who here knows how to swing a hammer? 
can you come back out to the house and help me finish the deck? Five more guys come out. Okay, now there's 15 guys out there. The guys he picked up at six, the guys he picked up at 12, and the guys he picked up at three o'clock. Now, it's apparent he's not gonna finish by six. So he runs over there and asks five more guys to come back and it's five o'clock. And those guys work for an hour. So at the end of the day, the guy gets together and sets up his table with his cash for all of the laborers he picked up in San Antonio to help him finish the deck, right? While this is happening, the people he brought at 5 p.m., at 5 p.m., he lines them up first to get paid first. And the guys that were there that showed up at 3 and at 12 and at 6 a.m. are at the back of the line. Well, when the guys who showed up at 5 p.m. show up, he pulls out a crisp $100 bill and hands it to him. Now, everybody behind them is like, woo buddy, check this out. Those guys are only here an hour and they got a hundred bucks. Cool, wonder what we're gonna make, this is exciting. And when the guys that showed up at six o'clock come up, the guy busts out a hundred and hands them a hundred and they go, whoa, 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 whoa. What the heck is this, man? This is just a hundred bucks. You paid those guys a hundred bucks that have been here an hour. And we've been here all day. We've been here 12 hours. And the guy looks at him and says, when I picked you up this morning at 6 a.m., didn't I ask you if you would be willing to work for me all day for a hundred bucks? And they said, well, yeah. And he goes, well, I'm giving you a hundred bucks. Well, those guys only work for you for an hour. And he said, what is it of your business if I choose to be generous? Is it your money to decide what to do with? This was a story I adapted from the B-I-B-L-E that Jesus told. You see, God is a generous God. Let me tell you something fascinating. Somebody who gives their life to the good Lord at 10 years old and lives a faith-filled, powerful, amazing life has this opportunity to spend eternity with God in heaven. Guess who else did too? You know him, the thief on the cross. The thief on the cross who may have lived a depraved life. He may have lived a very challenging life. Who knows what his story was? And yet they're crucified next to Jesus while one man is mocking Christ. If you're really the son of God, what are you doing here? Why don't you just get down off the cross and get us down off these freaking crosses? Help us out here. And the other guy says to him, the other thief on the cross who is guilty, by the way, man, leave him alone. We're guilty. We deserve what happened to us. We deserve to be here. This man is innocent. Leave him alone. And he looks at Jesus and says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said this powerful thing to him. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. You see, the thief on the cross only worked an hour, but he got the same pay as the folks who've been doing it their whole life. How can you receive a reward similar to Billy Graham? And how do we tie this into comparison being the thief of joy? It's simply this. All you have to do is do what God called you to do. Let me say that one more again so you can get excited this morning. All you have to do to receive Billy Graham's reward, similar, is do what he called you to do. That's it. He's not going to compare your fruitfulness to Billy Graham's fruitfulness because it is not relative in numbers. Just like Jesus sitting in the temple watching the people give the money into the offering bucket with his disciples when the rich people were giving out of the abundance of their riches and a little old lady walks up with a widow's mite like a penny. Jesus stops the guys and goes, guys, guys, come here, come here. Look, look at her, look at her. She gave more than anybody. And they're going, well, that doesn't make sense, Jesus. All these guys have been putting in tons of cash. And he goes, no, she gave all that she had. You see, it's relative to what you are called to. It's not comparative to other people. So what does that mean? Well, my friend, that means 
you know the guy, you know somebody had to tell Billy Graham about Jesus, right? Before Billy Graham could tell the planet about Jesus. Somebody had to, do you know that man or woman that led Billy Graham to Christ has the same or similar reward to Billy? Think about that for one minute. The man that led Billy to Christ has the same or similar reward to Billy. You know what? And that may have been his only calling. That may have been his only deal. God may have said, I want you to zero in on this kid right here. And I want you to tell him about Jesus. That's it. That's your assignment. The rest of the time on earth here are just going to be me and you fellowshipping, having fun. I'll help you with what you need help with. I'll be there with you through the hard times. I'll celebrate with you in the good times. I'll give you wisdom. I'll give you favor. I'll help you out here and there. But the only thing I'm calling you to do is do this. When this one guy to Jesus. And then Billy goes and wins the planet. Do you see what I'm saying? What we're looking at here is we're not looking at a comparative thing. How can you receive rewards similar to Billy Graham? Be faithful to do what God called you to do. What God called you to do. I have seven kids. Every one of my kids has unique and different gifts and talents. Some of my kids, I expect A's in mathematics. Other of my kids, I'm good if you bring me home a C plus, but you're going to bring me an A in English. I don't expect the same thing from all my kids. I expect the best with what their natural strength and gifting is. Their natural strength and their natural gifting is what I put a demand on. I don't want renaissance kids. I don't want a jack of all trades and master of none. I am raising my children to soar with their strengths, recognizing that as I pour into their strength zone, their strength will become so massive and incredible that they can hire out and leverage others who have giftings in the area of their weakness to synergize and create a level of excellence and productivity that is nearly impossible to the person who attempts to be a jack of all trades. I put a demand on the strength. So what if God has just called you to cut your next door neighbor's yard? What if that's your only calling? Cut your next door neighbor's yard. Just do that for them. That's your calling. Then guess what? You get a similar reward to Billy Graham who won millions of souls. What if he called you to just make a dinner once a week for somebody in your neighborhood? Well, then you get a reward similar to Billy Graham. What if he just called you to come into work and to pray over one person silently every day? That's your assignment for the rest of your life. That's it. That's all he's called you to do. You see, it's faithfulness to your calling, faithfulness to what you are called to do. You are not called to do what everybody else is called to do. And you are not going to stand before God. And he's going to go, wow, Billy Graham, look at all these people. Billy Graham went to Jesus and all you did was be kind to people. So you know what? You know, Billy's getting a mansion and you get the tough shit in the backyard. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works, folks. If you're faithful with what is given to you, then you receive a similar reward because everybody has a different calling. And comparison is the thief of joy. Let's not try to worry about being like anybody else or doing it like anybody else. If you're faithful to what he called you to do and you execute that faithfully, you receive the similar word. Just as I mentioned earlier, the young man that gave his life to the Lord at 10 years old and was in church every Sunday and sang in the choir and did everything right and followed all his rules and lived a full, happy life, entered into paradise upon his death, just like the thief on the cross. Who didn't live a life like that? You see, who can figure it out? What is your job then, my friend? Your job is to discover what God has called you to do. And I will give you a hint about how you can discover what he has called you to do. Number one, you have to have a relationship with him. You have to have a relationship with him. Number two, ask him. What is it that you have called me to do? What is it that you want me to do? Number three, determine what you think your gifts and strengths are. If you're not certain what they are, ask other people. What do you think comes natural to me that exceeds people around me? Not in comparison or being better than or worse than, but what do I do better than most people that when I'm doing that thing, I feel the most alive and fulfilled. That's your gifting. That's a hint into your gifting. 
Do you guys know what Steve Collins is? It's this right here. It's my ability to articulate and communicate complexities in a way that you can ingest them and then God help us apply them. I am here to admonish, encourage, and teach and give you revelation, not just information, to illuminate your thinking so that you can see yourself the way God sees you, value yourself the way God values you, love yourself the way God loves you so that you can go out and carry that to everybody else in your life, recognizing that you're never going to arrive at a perfect place. You are constantly under construction like 281, and there's always going to be work going on in you. And if you wait to pour out your light in this world until you get your crap together, well, friend, you ain't ever going to pour it out. So I'm here to inspire you to move forward in that. Ask the good Lord what it is. Ask other people what your gifting is. Think about what you enjoy doing most. And let me give you the biggest hint of all. Your gifts and talents and fulfilling your calling, what he's called you and created you to do, is always going to be manifested at the highest level in service to other people. Using your gifts and talents in service to other people. You were uniquely created for a calling and a purpose that is your own. And if your only calling is to make a spaghetti dinner once a month for a single mama, you get a similar reward to Billy Graham who won millions because that was Billy's calling. That was Billy's calling. He was faithful to his calling. Will you be faithful to yours? Will you discover yours? I hope today I've stirred it up enough that you're hungry to find out exactly what it is and that you make a decision today to go for it with everything that's inside of you. Have a great day, guys.